Okay, in this um, particular exercise, um, we have another variation on the play landform. And if we take a look at these, we have these kind of um, saddle shapes again, just similar to the net structure above, but these ones are actual landforms and then they have kind of cutouts in them to create um, maybe tunnels through or just uh, entries so that um, kids can go in and maybe there's sand inside and they play along these edges. They have a, a colored topping to them. So um, if we analyze the line work here, basically what I've done is um, just modeled one of these with lines. So I have the lower profile of, the, um, of these circles or ovals, and then I have um, elevated those using the same technique of the saddle as I did for the net structure. So basically, I used vertical lines to different heights and then used a interpolate points curve in between those different um, vertical lines to create the, the rails that we're going to use. In this one too, we have two cross-section curves that we're going to use for the sweeps. Um, you can see them on the edges. They're connected from the top rail to the bottom rail over here. Um, and there's another one here. So uh, we're going to use the sweep to command to create the uh, sloped edges of this landform. So let's put that in. Sweep two. Select first rail, which is this. The second rail is this. And our sweep shapes are going to be this rail and this rail. And I can press enter. Now it only creates half of a side. So in this case, we need to check off closed sweep to make sure that it continues all the way around the entire form. So that looks pretty good and I'm going to press okay. And I'm gonna repeat that for this other sloped side over here. So I can just select both of these edges and do a sweep two. Now it says select sweep shapes. I'm gonna select these cross section curves here. And again, check off closed sweep and we have our edges of this landform. So now we need to uh, create the um, topper uh, in between these. And there's a couple ways we could do that. We could do another sweep too. So for example, we could draw a line from here to here and select these rail curves, do sweep two and select this as my sweep shape. And that will create um, a, a pretty uniform, nice topper on top of this. So that works really well. But I did want to show you another technique, um, which is using the loft command. So um, if we just delete that cross section curve and we just take these two curves like they are, they're both closed polylines, and we type in loft, um, I'm going to uh, just select the automatic seam and press enter. And you can see that we have a another way to create a closed um, irregular NURB surface by using the loft command. So that leads to another fairly accurate, um, tight um, interpretation of these curves. Uh, so this is just to show you again that there's multiple ways of creating the same forms in Rhino. And if one command isn't working for you, try one of the other commands um, to see if that works better. Just a reminder with loft, your input curves have to either be closed or open. They can't be closed and open. So if you have two or three closed polylines, that's gonna work just fine. If you have two or three open polylines, that should work. But having closed and open together in a loft command isn't allowed. So now, um, it says create a cutout tunnel by drawing lines and splitting the surfaces, then duplicate the entire shape, scale it down and rotate to create the second landform. So what we can do is just use lines to split open this side. I'm gonna draw a line over here. We already have a, um, a curve on this, which is what we used for our sweep. So um, I'm going to try to match up these curves on this side so that I can create an opening that makes sense. And maybe what I'll do is draw a polyline from here, perpendicular and perpendicular. And I'll do the same for this one. So 
So I'm going to select this surface and this surface and then use my curves to split it. And now I can take those split curve, um, split surfaces and just delete them. And now I have a bit of a tunnel going through this. But if I wanna close off this edge, I can um, of course use a few different tools. Maybe I wanna use the surface from three or four corner points command. So I draw a surface here, here, match it up to this opening here and this opening here. And then I have a closed edge there. I can repeat that on this side as well. So now I have a tunnel that is has closed off insides um, and you can go through it into the central area. I'm going to select all of these surfaces and I'm going to join them together using J for join. That's going to create one uh, poly surface. And now I'm going to duplicate this and move it over and orient it like this one is. So I'm going to press Alt while holding down my um, gumball to move this over in the X direction. And now I am going to rotate it like this and then uniformly scale it down by holding down Shift on any of my um, axes and see if I can get it uh, closely oriented to this shape over here. If I want to be more precise and match it up, I can use the move command and select a, a spot on this and uh, match it up with the line work below. And then I could use a, um, a few commands. So first I'm going to use the scale command, so SC for scale. I'm going to select this as my base point because it's matched up with the bottom line. And I'm going to select this as my second point and just uh, stretch this up until it is reaching the outside edge of um, the outer polyline on the ground. And then I'm going to rotate it. So um, I can use the RO command and select a base point, select a reference point, and then just rotate until it looks like it's aligned with the polylines below. Um, there's another command that I could use, which is called orient. So if I hit OR, you see orient comes up. I can select a reference point here and a, another reference point up here. And then I can uh, choose reference points that I want to orient it to. So I want to keep this one the same. And I can orient this second reference point somewhere else on the um, drawing so that it lines up more perfectly with the base. So that's that landform. And um, now there's a question down here. What happens if you use loft for the shape instead of sweep two? So knowing that we have to either use closed or open polylines, what could we select for lofting? So what if we just took the base and the upper profiles of this shape and we tried the loft command? I'm going to use automatic seams and press enter. So this is a disaster. This doesn't look anything like what we were hoping to create. So I'm going to hit cancel. And let's see if we can work this out um, a little bit better. Let's try one piece at a time. So that uh, seems to work all right. Um, that doesn't look too bad, actually. So let's accept that. And then we can take these two curves and loft those. And again, that doesn't look too bad. That looks pretty good, actually. And we already know we can loft these middle parts because we did it on the previous one. So we can build this form with lofts. Um, it does end up uh, you know, taking maybe a little bit more time. I don't know, but um, I wanted to just show you again. There's multiple ways to build objects. If one way doesn't work for you, try another way. You can also try breaking it down into its component pieces and see if that works.